Guys, it's uh, Mishan from uh, C3 Cyber Club. Uh, this is our second uh, online video tutorial. Uh, we're going to be going over texturing and materials. So, uh, if this is your first time with the software, uh, probably check out our first video tutorial just so you can see the basic modeling techniques. But uh, let's get started. So, right now, this is my basic house that I built up. Um, right now, everything's made out of dirt, so it uh, doesn't really look like the greatest place to live at. Um, but we're going to change that. We're going to spruce it up a little bit. So we need to get into texturing uh, to be able to do that. So textures. Um, first of all, we want to make sure that we're in edit mode. Okay, so now we have our house layer selected. And you guys can use um, any particular uh, map if you want to. This is uh, just a map that I worked on. But you can use any of the maps that are provided by Platinum Art Sandbox or work on your own. Uh, we're just going to go over some of the techniques that allow you to sort of spruce up that map. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start texturing uh, this first wall here. So what we want to do is make sure that we have this whole area selected. So like our very first tutorial, we want to make sure we left click and right click to select the whole face. So now we have this whole side selected. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and press F2 to bring up our texture menu. So once you press F2, you see all our different textures that are, are assigned to us right now that we had, can select. So you'll see there's actually eight pages worth of content. Uh, so there's a lot of different choices. Um, you'll look here, uh, page two has a few more different sort of textures for the houses. Um, we also have uh, page three is a little bit more futuristic textures, more sort of metallic, shiny textures. Uh, even number four is like that. Number five is where we have more sort of our primary colors. So if you just want to set particular colors for something, that's fine. Uh, and then we have number uh, six, seven, um, eight kind of go a little bit more into sort of white and black textures and uh, a few other ones that we can select from right here. Okay. So right now, uh, since I'm building a house, uh, let's just stick with uh, some stones. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's click on this one. So once you click on your texture, uh, it should automatically assign it to uh, whatever you had selected before. So we're going to go ahead and just press F2 again to get rid of our selection. And uh, you'll notice here are the textures. So pretty good. And uh, we can go ahead and do that for the rest of our uh, house here. So again, left click, right click, it's going to be much easier. And uh, I can go ahead and press F2 again to select it. And uh, we're going to do this side. And uh, there's actually a quicker way to do it. So now you notice it might take a pretty long time just to kind of select every single area. Well, w what we can also do is we can hold down Y on our keyboard. This is a, a texturing shortcut. So if we hold down Y, we can cycle through all our textures very, very quickly. Uh, it's also really handy because it saves the last texture that you used. For example, I hold on Y, so I have this area selected. So next time I go ahead and select a new area, uh, I'll select this particular area right here. I'll hold down Y, and now you'll notice that the last texture that we use is in our cycle wheel. So we can go back to it very, very quickly. So that is sort of the, uh, the texturing process. Now another easy way to uh, select your entire house and apply textures is by making sure that all the faces are on. And the way that we do that is if we actually hold down Shift and press 0 at the same time, you notice here on the left hand side it says texture all faces on. What that means is, uh, let me give you an example. I'm going to go ahead and make a cube here. And uh, I'm, what I'm going to do is apply a texture. And you'll notice the whole thing becomes texturized. Every single face in this cube has been texturized, not just one side. Let me turn it off. So I'm going to go ahead and just press Shift-0. And now apply a texture. So I'm going to hold down Y, use my scroll wheel. Now see, it only does it on that, that side. This makes things much, much easier and much quicker if you need to texturize the entire object. So for example, I'm going to do this whole house here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just click on the ground. And uh, I'm going to go the exact opposite side of my house. It should be right over here on this corner. And uh, it would be at the very top. So my problem is, is that I don't want to select right here because it's not going to select the top of the roof. And if I select here, it's not going to select the side. So what we can do is we can just basically put the selection up in the sky. So I'm going to go ahead and just look directly up in the sky here. And uh, looks pretty good. And let me just double check. Yep, it looks like uh, this whole house is inside this selection. So now what I can do is I'm going to press Shift 0. So texture all faces is on. Now I'm going to go ahead and press F2 here. I'm just going to make a, a texture. Uh, let's just do uh, these bricks here. Actually, I'll do these bricks. 
I just press F2. Now everything inside this house has been texturized. So this is a really, really great method if you're just starting out and you need a texture that it's going to encompass the entire object that you're making. So right now, now that I have most of the uh, bricks in here, I can kind of go back in here and apply some different textures to the floor if I want to. And uh, it's just much easier because now that I know all my walls are this particular texture. Okay? So make sure you use that method when you're designing your house. It's going to make things much, much quicker. Now, one of the other things I wanted to get into is materials. Now, materials and textures are a little bit different. Materials are things that you can sort of interact with. And with interacting, I mean by, you know, for example, water. You can swim in it, lava. If you jump into it, you're going to die. Uh, things called clips, no clips. Um, all these various different things fall into the category of uh, materials. So let me go ahead and uh, I'm going to make a pool right now in the backyard. Uh, let's go ahead and make a nice little pool. Bring up the real estate value of this particular house. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and make my grid size a little bit bigger. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just put the pool over here. And uh, I'm going to push it down. So I'm going to do the depth of the pool. So that's pretty deep. I like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on my mouse the outside, the edge of it. Right there. Okay. Now if you make a mistake and uh, you can't fill up the whole thing, what you can always do is just right click and keep right clicking and eventually it's going to extend that selection. So that's pretty good, it's covering the entire pool. Now what I'm going to do is press F3 and uh, we're going to go to materials. These are where my materials are located at. So we have a lot of different ones here. From clip, glass, lava, no clip, water, respawn, alpha, and AI clip. And let's go over each one. Let's go over the water. So I'm going to go ahead and select on the water. And now, it's applied a water material, but it doesn't look like water. But you need to go to uh, game mode to uh, see what it really looks like. So if you go to game mode, now we have the reflections, we have the waves on here. It looks a lot more realistic. So we can jump into it. We're actually swimming in it right now. So the controls are pretty basic. Just basically look up and move forward. That's all. So we can also jump out of it. Okay. Let's uh, try lava. So we're going to go ahead and create a little lava pit here. Let's push that down, and uh, that's pretty good. And again, I'm going to right-click on the outside. Actually, instead of doing that, let's make it a little bit more interesting here. I'm going to make lava, but only the, let's see, let's push it down even more. Here we go. This is good. So I'm going to make lava, but I'm only going to make it on this little area, this middle area. So you notice this is going to be the width of the, uh, the lava. So I'm going to go ahead and press F3, materials lava okay so now if I jump into it I automatically die and I'm just sinking through right there and it should eventually disappear there we go since it was just a little layer now we're gonna go ahead and uh... oops remember if your character does die go ahead and press spacebar bring him back to life or you just do what I just did um, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually put water on top so you can actually stack materials on top of each other and come some really crazy combinations. So here's my water. So now I have a little bit of a gameplay challenge. I have to get to the other side and if I sink too far down my character will die. Now obviously this is a little too easy because I made my water pretty pretty thick but if I made it very very thin by changing the grid size to maybe for example this one this would definitely make it a lot more challenging. A little bit more fun. Let's actually try it. I haven't really tried it this small before. Let's just see what happens. Okay, some materials, water. It's got a tiny little layer of water and lava underneath. <laughs> so I didn't even make it. Let me try one more time here. I have to jump very, very quickly. You're going to have to have some fast reflexes just to get to the other side. Yeah, that's not going to happen. But uh, you can make your game much more challenging just by kind of combining these different materials together. Uh, let's find out some other materials and play around with them. Uh, let's go over clip. Now, have you ever played a video game before where you're trying to fall off the edge of a map or you're trying to get across somewhere but there seems to be this invisible wall that's kind of stopping you? That's probably because the game designers created a clip in the game. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to make a clip for the stairs here. So I don't want my character to fall off the edge of the, uh, the edge and fall to the floor here. So what I'm going to do is I need to actually make a actual geometry. So I'm gonna just build it up here. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it. So I'm select one side. Now the other side. I'm press F3. Bring up my materials. Let's go to clip. 
And what I'm going to do is just use my scroll wheel just to push away the geometry and add the material. There we go. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side here. So left click, right click, F3, materials, clip, push it away. And now, let me uh, go to the third person mode here. When I try to walk, it will not let me. Obviously, I can see it in edit mode, but I can't see it in game mode. Now, there's something the exact opposite. There's something called a no clip. Now, this is when uh, you have a wall here that you can actually walk through. So, if, for example, we had sort of a hidden uh, treasure chest on the other side or passageway. We can kind of combine a no clip to allow us to get to the other side. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a different texture because I, I want to show the character or the player that there's some sort of variation on the swan. There's something different about it with the rest of the level. So, and you use textures. Uh, often to sort of convey a sort of uh, a direction or a sense of uh, um, a, a sense of uh, skill for the player to kind of get across um, so they're very very helpful uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and press F3 uh, I'm gonna go to my materials and uh, I'm gonna go to my no clip once I click on my no clip I don't have to use my scroll wheel I just kind of just go in and now as you can see, I'm actually going through the wall. Okay? Let's find out a few more. Um, let's go over respawn. Now, respawn is an area where your character will automatically die when he touches it. So, for this example, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to respawn right here. And what I did was I put it in this little section of the doorway. And uh, I don't want to be too cruel, so I want to at least let the player know that uh, there's something bad over here. And I'm going to actually use uh, these glowing textures, textures here at the bottom. These one, two, three, four, five. Actually, there's a few more. Uh, these textures actually glow. So if I click on this is on my first uh, texture menu. I click on it. Now, there's obviously something going on here. Something's not right. Now, if I walk through it, my character automatically dies. Um, this comes in really handy uh, if you're making uh, like a torch or you know maybe some vines or like uh, some thorns or an area where your character falls off and you want him to automatically die when he touches it. That's when you would use a respawn, which is really great. Okay, so let me show you some other sort of techniques. Uh, I'm gonna show you an alpha. So with alpha, I'm gonna go ahead and select these objects here. I'm gonna go ahead and press F3 materials and go to alpha so when I press on alpha oops I didn't bring my character back to life what it does is it makes a see-through texture it's very similar to glass except it applies a texture to it and I can't walk through it I'll just make some glass right now since I haven't done that yet I'll just apply it right here go to my materials go to my glass and now I have my glass, and uh, unfortunately I can't break it. I don't know how. If you guys figure out how to break glass, that would be great. But uh, you can actually see through it, and uh, that's it. So the last one I want to go over is the AI clip. Now it sounds exactly, uh, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's basically creating a clip that almost, uh, or that actually prevents your AI character or a creature to get through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply it to this little area. I'm going to make like sort of a little little fence area here. And I'm going to put it right here. Okay, so I have a little area right here for my creature. And if you haven't gone over creatures yet, I'm going to do it really quickly. Don't worry, we have another video tutorial that will show you how and go in depth with it. Press F3 here. I'm going to go to my type, creature. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just put the rat. Now if I press E one more time, I loaded my creature in here. So now you notice this rat cannot get across the AI clip, but I can go through it. So this is a great way to sort of control your characters, where you want them to go, kind of limit their movement. <laughs> oh my gosh. Looks like the rat actually jumped out. That is a very smart rat. Uh, if I had some cheese, I think I would give it to him just as a reward. But uh, it looks like it just wasn't high enough, so if I actually built this AI clip a little bit higher, um, he wouldn't be able to get out. But uh, that's just basically a quick uh, tutorial on the uh, the materials. And actually, let me show you how to clear out the material. So if you go ahead and select the material again, 
press F3, go to materials, go to material clear. We can have our materials disappear. It's just basically deleting them. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing over here. Material, material clear, now it's gone. And my rat seems like he's very happy that he doesn't, he's not stuck in a cage anymore. Okay, so um, that is, yep, a quick little tutorial into textures and how to apply them to uh, your map. Also, m materials and how to utilize your materials and put them into the game. And uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, check out our website, c3cyberclub.com. You can also check out the Platinum Arts website. They have some really great tutorials on there. And uh, I hope to see you guys again. Bye-bye.